Righto, Taliodo champs and wharf. It is war. It is war between Intel and Apple. Well, Intel and everyone, they're trying to claim aim. They aren't so fast in some other tests. But anyway, Intel have come out and claimed that their CPU is faster and they've got better battery life, all the same sort of battery life. Well, let's dig into it. You want to stay to the end because it's going to get fruity because I'm going to get my boots stuck right into Intel here. But um, let's find out what their claims are, whether they have any basis. And I'm going to tell you what's true because I've done many videos comparing 11th gen CPUs, Intel versus M1 versus AMD's 4000 series. Check out my backlog of videos. There's plenty battery life, performance, etc. So I actually can talk with a bit of authority when it comes to, you know, comparing these chips. Also, I'm on the M1 Mac. I have 83% battery. And by the way, the max battery meter is not linear, so it might be 80%. But I charged the battery like two days ago. I'm actually recording now. I'm using a Mac microphone. Let me know how that sounds. But first of all, this is from PC World, Gordon Mahone. He's a legend. I'll leave a link to this article in the description there. I love when <laughs> Gordon goes out on Apple. He pays that hard, but um, he's fair. He's balanced, so no issues with Gordon. So let's have a look at the productivity performance. But before I do that, I just want to say with Intel CPUs, I'm going to get stuck into Intel, not so much the CPU, later in the video. But what I'll say is this CPU is good. This is the 1185G7. I've tested 1165G7. That's the Intel versus the M1 Mac, of course. I'm not here to tell you that that's a bad chip. That is really good, that 11th gen chip. It is a quad core versus, you know, eight cores on the Apple one. And if you get a laptop that's Evo certified or 11th gen, you're going to be happy with it. You're going to be happy with the battery life, the, you know, the connectivity, the features the Wi-Fi, everything's going to be good. And the best thing is you can run a GPU, right? Which the Macs can't do. You know, has AVX 512, has, you know, QuickSync, the next gen version of that, or next gen version of the Intel XE graphics, which have better H.264 and HEVC decoding and encoding. And it has its own sort of machine learning as well, which a lot of products like, say, for example, Adobe take advantage of. And when you use, you know, some of the built-in technologies of the Intel chips, they're that much faster than anything else just because they're using, you know, the hardware acceleration on the Intel chips. That's the same with the M1s, right? They've got their own technologies and, you know, stuff that's optimized for the M1 works well as well. So I'm not saying that this is a bad chip from Intel, but have a look here at the productivity. And what you can see there, it's a big blue erections. Mainly they're bigger, right? So overall, 1.32 versus 1. You know, this is all productivity stuff, encrypting, photo enhancement, and that's basically using Chrome and Web XPRT3. And then on the right hand side, you have Office. Now, one thing to point out is that a lot of that stuff on Office is actually native. It actually says it's native on the M1. So they're clear wins for the Intel system when it comes to productivity. That being said, I don't think you're going to be using M1 and going, oh man, this word is slow. That Office suite would not be optimized 100%, even though it is native for M1 at the moment. And it's no surprise to me that it is faster than the M1. Of course, these are cherry picked, right? Let's go to the next thing here, content creation. This is very interesting because I have different results to this, although I have not tested the latest version of Media Encoder because it is um, Apple Silicon ready now, it is native. But when I tested, the M1 was definitely faster for what I'd done exporting a real project to H.264 and H.265. Now, I've no reason to believe that these are false. I guarantee these will probably be 100% true, but these would be cherry picked. And that Topaz Labs, I'll bet you that's not native. Yes, it is not native. So that's that, that one with the big blue erections there, just disregard that straight away. So this, you know, one right here, because it's not even native. It doesn't say it's native down the bottom. But I will test that for you, that Adobe Premiere. In my testing, the M1 was faster. I've got some real projects that I can just load up and then export, and I'll tell you the truth. So sub up for that. But maybe the latest version of Premiere has taken advantage of something that's in these sort of 11th gen CPUs. But again, these would all be cherry picked there. But yeah, there's some clear wins for the Intel there. Now I want to highlight this thing here. Content aware fill does not work on Photoshop. That does work now with the latest version of the beta version of Photoshop. The Apple Silicon version I'm talking about. So that's not true anymore. It does work. Now, if we have a look at games here, there's a lot of BS here because have a look here, it's like 000. zero, zero. Oh, look at all the games you can't play in a Mac. Well, of course, it's a Mac. I guess this is just marketing, right? 
So if we have a look at these cherry pick benchmarks, it's very interesting because it looks like Intel win, what, two of them and the other ones are sort of like even. But you can look at Hitman, how much faster the M1 is and they don't have Fortnite there because I can guarantee you Fortnite is much faster on the M1. And some of these things, they're not even running native, right? Even though they probably are because they're using metal, even if they're translated with Rosetta, they're mostly running native. Now that one Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor, I bet you it's using OpenGL or some crap like that where the Mac just, yeah, it's no good. Anything using metal, I guarantee you the Mac is faster in gaming. I've done a lot of gaming testing on it and yeah, they can tell you this and then basically this is just to tell you, oh look, got all the games you cannot get on the M1. No PUBG, no Call of Duty, no this, no that, no simulator. But of course, remember with the Intel systems, you can whack on an eGPU. So when it comes to these battery life claims, oh my God, what are they doing? So they're claiming they have the same sort of battery life as the M1, okay? I guarantee you in this test, that'll be true. But I can tell you right now, that is BS. Netflix streaming with tabs, like, yeah, as I said, that will be 100% true. But I can tell you, nothing's going to touch this MacBook Pro and they're comparing it to a MacBook Air when a MacBook Pro has better battery life than the MacBook Air. And I can tell you in real world and if you're video editing and stuff like that, the M1 Mac has much better battery life. It's not even comparable. I guess the only one I can sort of compare is the Surface Book 3, which has sort of like two batteries. That has really good battery life. But here's the thing here. Oh, look at the things you cannot do with the M1. Yeah, and sort of... Some of them are true. The Xbox and PlayStation controller will work on the M1s with the next Mac OS update. eGPU, no. You cannot do it with the M1. Big advantage for the Intel system there. I'll say that until the cows come home, it's good to be able to whack a you know, big, powerful eGPU on and play some real games. What the hell is it going on about gaming headset? I'm not sure what that means. Question mark, question mark this. Qualcomm drawing. Like, who cares? Samsung, fingerprint, whatever. That is true, most things will work within. The Bluetooth and the USB situation on these M1s, it's not great. Like, you know, I can't get full speeds out of some of my SSDs, even with the latest update. And yeah, it's just, it'll get better in future iterations. But it is true, connecting more stuff to, you know, uh, live gen, it's just going to work, etc. So, all right, so let's talk about it. Intel, yes, it's clear these things will be faster, whatever. I have no arguments there, but come on. Are you serious? You ain't got the same battery life as the M1. You haven't got the same performance, especially GPU. Single core, you are equal with the M1, 100%. And for most stuff you do, they will be as fast as each other. But multi-core, you're well behind the M1 Mac. And what needs to be said is, when they're comparing all these performance figures, it uses like double the amount of power. Where is your mention of this Intel? Your system is using double the amount of power as the M1 to get the same job done in most cases. Maybe you're faster in your cherry pick stuff, but um, I could equally cherry pick some stuff on this M1 and it'll blow away the Intel too. So, you know, horses for courses there, whatever. But here's the thing, Intel. This is your premium CPU. Premium, all right? Premium laptops get it. It's expensive. It can beat like the 45 watt, you know, six core parts of a couple of years ago. It is a good chip. But this is Apple's low end chip. And they'll have a 14 inch MacBook Pro soon and a 16 inch. And that'll have double the core counts and it'll absolutely obliterate anything from 11th generation. And it will do it using less power. Can you imagine just adding another four performance cores to these M1 Macs and have an M1X or whatever it is, M2? It's just going to be off the charts. Single core probably be the same, but you can imagine for multi-core and the GPU will be that much faster again as well. So yeah, come on Intel, get your hand off it and yeah, stop playing the old Fist of Fury, mate. And anyway, catch you in the next one, guys. Tally ho.